rescued from the mud by the union of a serpent king and a princess. With the religions of India in their hearts, Cambodians soon had the wealth of Southeast Asia at their feet. Ruled by the laws of karma, wherein the powerful are destined to reign as long as they can prove it, Cambodia's kings became not only gods on earth, but the portals through which cyclical time pierces the illusion of worldly existence. To honor and house that divine gateway, right here in the medieval city of Angkor, the Cambodians labored to recreate heaven on earth. Their imagination built some of the most incredible temples, including the largest religious building ever constructed. With the help of a priestly caste imported from India, and a bureaucracy that was obsessed with umbrellas. A Cambodian king was simultaneously the fire of universal destruction, the disperser of heavenly ambrosia, and the bringer of all rain. For a thousand years, Cambodia's prosperity depended upon taming the monsoon, on softening the crash of its floodwaters, and dispersing its manna to the rice fields. But at the very moment in which they converted from a religion of power to a religion of renunciation, the rain stopped. Abandoned by the gods they had themselves abandoned, the Cambodians now refused to adapt to a changing environment. Within a century, they will disappear from history, leaving us only their splendid ruins. Today, each and every stone of Angkor tells a story of god kings, temple mountains, hydraulic cities, and the illusion of man's mastery over nature. So join me, Joshua Humphreys, novelist, historian, dripping with sweat, as I walk you through a history of Cambodia told through its art, its religions, its in-jungle cities. Join me for the Stones of Angkor.